All right. So the question says, a barge is pulled by two tugboats, as shown in this figure. One tugboat pulled on the barge with some units of force at some angle. Um, the other tugboat pulls at some magnitude at the other angle. Resolve the pulling forces to their scalar component and find the components of the resultant force pulling on the barge. What is the magnitude of the resultant pull? What is the direction relative to the line AB? Okay, um, I don't know why it says scalar component. It's a vector addition question. So let me just label my vectors so that I have some way to refer to them. Uh, I'm going to call this vector vector C. I see already A and B are already in use, so I won't use those letters. So let me call this my vector C. Let me call this my vector D. And what the question is asking is, what is a C plus a D, basically? And once you have these um, vectors, like a vector C plus D, I guess I could have called that vector, vector E. There are different ways of specifying those vectors. And one thing to remember about two-dimensional vectors is that it will always take two parameters to fully specify two-dimensional vectors. And so you can give those, um, you, you can give those uh, two parameters in terms of components. So here, if I define my axis this way, I think the natural axis to define is this direction as my x direction and this direction or um, the way it's saying above and below, I think I want my plus y to be in this direction. So I could uh, specify those parameters in terms of the x and y component of vector E. I could do that. Now the way the question is asking, they want me to specify it in the polar coordinate system. They want me to give them the magnitude and direction. Uh, what does not change is that you still need the two parameters to fully specify the um, uh, fully specify a two-dimensional vector. So looking at this, you know, I can't quite tell if it's going to go above or below. Uh, so let me just do the calculation. So what I first need to do is with this coordinate axis that I've defined, I need to uh, resolve the pulling forces to their I don't know if I could call it scalar, to their components, to their X and Y components. So I need to say, all right, my vector C, um, so I'm given this angle here. So my X component is gonna be the magnitude. Um, and the common convention with the vectors is if you write the letter without the arrow, that refers to the magnitude of the vector uh, times the, um, so with this being the angle, theta, um, this, uh, the x side is the, the, it's the adjacent side, so it's going to be cosine of the angle, 15 degrees, and my y component will be, um, will be magnitude again, the hypotenuse of the triangle, times the, it's so y component will be this side here, so it'll be opposite side to the angle, so it's going to be sine of 15 degrees. So that's vector C in terms of their X and Y components. Um, and let me write down vector D. And here I'm going to introduce some uh, signs as in a plus, plus minus signs. So I can see that the, the adjacent side is still going along the positive, what I labeled as positive X direction. So it's still going to be positive D cosine of 12 degrees. And now my Y component, I'll have to be careful. It's going in the opposite direction. It's uh, going opposite from the positive Y direction. So I'm going to put in a sign here saying it's going to be minus and then the length of this side here, D sine theta, D sine of 12 degrees. So uh, let me do this addition, C plus D, in my calculator so that I don't have to write down too many numbers. I don't like writing down numbers. <laughs> Every time I make mistakes, they are usually in writing down numbers. So, <laughs> so let me just go through this in one shot. C, that's going to be 4,000 
um, and then times cosine times the way my calculator works i have to type in the angle first and then type in the cosine <laughs> okay that's it and my calculator takes care of the order of operation on its own so i can do just the plus d 5000 times the uh, cosine of 12 degrees so 12 um cosine of 12 okay double checking this to be sure okay all of that looks fine equals um uh, 8000 okay that looks about right so let me just drag this to the side and write copy that down uh, usually if you keep uh, three to four significant figures you should be fine so i'll be keeping four significant figures here 8754 um, oh, let me introduce or let me illustrate use of one other tool that I want you to be aware of that you can use. So if you have a scientific calculator and um, if this is practice for you, then that's great. I do encourage it. I, you will see me using my scientific calculator often. Now, sometimes with the calculators, they can be very frustrating. You make a small error and you get a wrong answer. And sometimes it's difficult to figure out where you made a mistake. So a tool that is sometimes useful is a tool called Wolfram Alpha. You can think of it as uh, WolframAlpha.com. You can think of it as basically an online calculator. And frankly, oftentimes it's uh, much more intuitive and user-friendly to use than scientific calculators. Because the way you use it is you basically type in the expressions. So here, um, uh, well, I remember, I kind of remember what it was. So for the Y component, it's going to be C times the sine of 15 degrees. So 4,000 times the sine of 15 degrees. Uh, I do want to make sure I put in degrees because it might mistakenly think it's radian. So <laughs> degrees um, plus, and it's going to be minus 5,000 times the sine of 5,000. <laughs> See, this is one of the things it's nice about. You can go back and fix it. Uh, times uh, sine of 12 degrees. And there's an answer there. Uh, let me just press enter. The reason I'm doing press enter is one of the nice thing about Wolfram Alpha is it'll tell you the input interpretation. So if you made a typo or maybe the system doesn't interpret it the way you meant it, maybe I forgot to put in degrees and it interprets these as radians. Uh, although, you know, it didn't. Wow, it's smart. Um, <laughs> so Wolfram Alpha is uh, quite intelligent, as in there is some artificial intelligence behind it, machine learning behind it. So it's an intelligent system. It's, uh, <laughs> it catches some of your errors better than your scientific calculator would. And, um, and you know you can change this calculation input more easily than you can on a scientific calculator, and it'll part be um, it'll be particularly useful later on as we do more physics questions where you have to worry about physical units. Uh, Wolfram Alpha is a unit aware system, so for units of force, if I say Newton here, Wolfram Alpha understands what a Newton is, and it'll. In its calculation, it'll include that Newton, and it'll do some of the unit conversions too. Um, so, okay, so here all I want really is minus 4.282. So, minus 4.282, and um, and that's my answer. Uh, so, one with the scientific calculator, one with all from Alpha. Let me just uh, uh, finish this. So. Um, if the question had asked us for the component of uh, the resultant, then we could give this as answer immediately. They didn't. So we have to imagine uh, drawing this uh, figure. So with my axis, x and y. Um, so in the x direction, I'm going that many units. In the y direction, I'm not going that many units. So it's going to be about this direction, not exactly to scale. This being my 8,754, and this being my uh, 4.282. So I'm drawing the right triangle here. This is the right angle. These are the two legs. So for my hypotenuse, 
um, it's gonna be very close to this the way things add up but let me just do that so for my hypotenuse I use the Pythagorean theorem the square of a hypotenuse is equal to squares of these or just doing all the calculation all in one shot it's gonna be one of the legs squared plus the other leg 4.282 squared um, add them up together and then take the square root and as I was saying, it was gonna be very close. Why is it smaller? That doesn't make any sense. Um, did I do something wrong? Um, yeah, okay, okay, I made a typo. That's why. Um, A7. I mean, the system would still accept that as correct, but I don't want to have typos in my video. <laughs> okay. It, okay, edit them up. Okay, let me take the square root. All right, a seven five four. It's very close. In fact, within four significant figures, the hypotenuse is still about eight seven five four. So the as far as the the magnitude goes, that's gonna be the really large component. The angle will be more uh, sensitive to that direction. So let me do that with more care. So I'm looking for this angle here. Uh, this is the angle relative to the line AB. So it's going to be the arc tangent of these. And I will demonstrate one thing with that. Um, so arc tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 4.282 divided by the adjacent is 7 by 4 equals that take the arc tangent and and that's the answer in degrees it's a very small angle 0 0.0280 uh, degrees uh, so 0 0.0280 0 0.0280 degrees now when i put in these answers the system will say i got the radius right but not the angle let me show you and I will explain why it's saying that S754 and 0 0.0280 it'll say I got half right and the reason is um, and this is something that you'll have to get used to over time it's asking for the what is the direction of the pole relative to the line AB so this angle is being used to indicate the direction. Now, this direction, it can go both ways. So when you say 0 0.080 degrees, it's actually ambiguous. Do I mean that angles to the right or the way the question says above? Or do I mean that angle to the left or the way the question says below? So uh, with those wordings, I get the sense that question is going to the angles to the right as being positive and angles to the left as being negative. So I, uh, so, and this is one of those things where sometimes the question is less than 100% clear. This is one of those cases. And <laughs> this is where I would recommend that you, um, it comes with the practice in reading question when they want you to give you a, give a signed answer. So here, I know from my years of experience doing questions like this, that they wanted a signed answer. So I need to say minus 0 0.0280 degrees. So I need to say that. And um, you know, it's cases like this, again, that's why you have practically infinite tries and there aren't any penalties associated with multiple tries. So, um, so if you gave an answer, um, treating it as a, like a magnitude, absolute value, positive, negative, doesn't matter, and then question um, marks it as wrong, then you know, consider the possibility that the question was uh, anticipating a signed response.